What is up? Welcome to episode 24 of Origin PC Live. Let's do it. Hello friends, welcome. My name is Alexis Roselle, community leader at Origin PC. I'm Kevin Wojcicki, CEO, co-founder of Origin PC, and I like what you've done with the place here. Oh, you like it? I like it. <laughs> We've changed some things around. Uh, quick recap for the new viewers of Origin PC Live. This is a show where we talk about the latest gaming, geek news, what we're up to, and we chatted up with a special guest. This, this week's special guest is our personal friend, a longtime member of the Origin PC family, Mr. Accretion Gaming. We'll chat with him later on in the show. You can interact with us during the show by posting in chat or making comments, and we'll be watching for your feedback and responses. Kevin, what was the previous Post of the Week topic? Last week's Post of the Week topic was, what would you like to see turned into a theme park, and what would the rides or shows be? Examples include Alien and Predator theme park, uh, complete with an interactive predator hunt, and an alien-infested spaceship. A Fallout theme park, including several landmarks and characters from the games. That would be so awesome. Or, yeah, that would be, that's <laughs> the best one. Or a Lord of the Rings theme park where you can actually walk into Mordor. Boring. <laughs> One last thing. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody on Mixer, everybody on Facebook, and everybody on Twitch. Thank you. And with that, let's kick off the show. Oh. <laughs> Our first story is about Toys R Us closing down 182 stores across the United States. Teardrop. Since filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy last year, Toys R Us announced that it will be closing these stores to keep the company going as it goes through some restructuring. There will be over 600 stores that will be remaining open. Uh, Toys R Us sells video games and video game merch, and back in the day, even an old it was an old PC game store. Uh, Kevin, what do you think about these closures and the future of Toys R Us? It's so sad. Isn't it? Amazon, please buy them and keep them alive. I know. It's, it's Amazon that really knocked them. Think about please. It. The Toys R Us brand alive. Still love that brand. I I went to that store last year and I bought the Amazon Classic. I camped out at Toys R Us. I have the one in, the one in Kendall still alive. The one in Kendall, Miami. For those of you in Kendall, Miami, it's still alive. It's not bankrupt yet. Uh, my first ever job when I was 17 year old, 17 years old, was at a Toys R Us. Oh really? And it was the overnight crew for the holiday season, where we'd be our our shift was from 11 p.m. to 7 in the morning. And it was restocking, restocking the shelves, uh, all the shelves for the holiday season. It was crazy. And now the shelves are empty. And <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad to see it go. I have so many great memories going to Toys R Us as a kid. Hopefully, they'll keep it alive somehow, some way. I hope so too. I have uh, what's the name of the giraffe? The, the giraffe mascot, yeah. Jeffrey. Jeffrey the giraffe. There's so many great memories there. I used to buy. So I, I used to just I would force my parents to take me there. Um, and I would just go in the store, like, without knowing what I wanted. Just know that I want something. They'd give me a budget. I'd go in there and just go crazy. Kids <laughs> today, they don't know what they're missing. I know. Kids I, today, now they just go to Amazon, create a wish list. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and have uh, their, their stream following pay for it. <laughs> yes. Because you know they're Twitch streamers now, too. Uh, what's next in news, Kev? Coming up next, uh, some gaming news about Anthem, Bioware's newest franchise that was revealed last year at E3. Reports across the web have come out that Anthem will now be released in 2019. Big surprise. EA has not officially commented on the status, uh, which was previously announced to be releasing supposedly in fall 2018. And other Bioware-related news, the next Dragon Age is also in development and will contain live elements that will expand on the story, whatever that means. Alexis, what do you think about all this? Uh, pretty cool. Bioware's always been one of my favorite game developers. Um, they've kind of haven't hit the mark for me in the past recent years, but I'm, I have high hopes for Dragon Age. I love the, I loved all the Dragon Age series, and I have high hopes for Anthem as well. It seems to be a direct competitor for um, for Destiny, which is great, and the graphics look absolutely amazing. Who knows? Who knows how it's going to be, though? As long as there's no loot boxes, right? That's what we're we're trying to steer. I don't know. From. Live elements smells I, like I loot boxes. <laughs> <laughs> smells like DLC. I guess we'll see what it's going to be. The graphics look incredible. If it even comes close, even if I could play through it and and get enough content for like two weeks of attention, I'll be happy with it. So hopefully they at least give me that. But if it's something that's really really good that I can really grasp onto for months on end or even years, it'd be amazing. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see how it all pans out. 
I'm not excited for Anthem yet just because it's so far out. It is so People far. at E3 were saying, oh, aren't you super excited about Anthem? Eh, not really. It's so far away. It's going to be delayed and delayed. Yeah, and who knows? What we saw at E3 could be completely different by the time it actually comes out. Yep. And that's that's been true for so many games in the past. So, I mean, uh, again, I have high hopes, but we'll see. The good news is plenty of awesome games to play now in the meantime. True. Plenty of uh, indie games and even the AAA titles that are coming out now are pretty spectacular. Yeah, let's face it. We're on the horizon. There's too many games. Let's too many it. games. Yeah, <laughs> we're exactly. overloaded with games. If one big game gets delayed, it's no big deal. No biggie. All right, and now for some Origin PC news. Uh, earlier this week, Laptop Mag reviewed our Eon 17X gaming laptop with an Intel Core 8th Gen processor. Here's what they had to say. The Origin PC Eon 17X delivers great performance for all your gaming, virtual reality, and multitasking needs, and offers a deep well of customization options. Uh, what do you think about this review and what Laptop Mag thought? Well, it's always really cool when Laptop Mag or any website or magazine uh, offers to even review our stuff, so it's great that they reviewed it. It's great that they gave us uh, some glowing words. Uh, it's always super cool, no matter what. It's always, to me, and really cool to see somebody talk positively about our products. So, now that thank we're on, you, Laptop Bag. Yeah, now that we're on the topic, I wanted to ask you because you weren't here for that show, but me, it was me and Lewis, right? It was you and I, Lewis, I think. Uh, we're discussing the. the <laughs> Lewis, Lewis just went like this. <laughs> That's, uh, uni that's universal for yes, I guess. We're discussing the launch of our new case and how Digital Trends gave us an editor's choice like the day of and oh, how amazing yes. that was. Thank that you, Digital Trends. Cool. That, that was amazing. Cool. We were there in, in Las Vegas. Uh, it was the Monday before lot, before CS started. You know, we're frantically going over the schedule, going over the room. We set up things, you know, a little different than we had originally planned. We're super busy doing all this stuff, super stressed out, and then we read the Digital Trends review, and we're like, wow, <laughs> this is awesome. It reinvigorated Now you. let's get back to work. Yeah, right, exactly. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, exactly, it gave us, it gave us purpose <laughs> to go to push through that week. Awesome. Uh, what's next on Geek News? Kicking off our Geek News uh, is some news about the long, in development Duke Nukem movie. That's right, it's finally coming. Some. Earlier this week, there were reports that John Cena, of all people, was in oh, negotiations goodness. to star in a Duke Nukem movie. Michael Bay's production company is producing. Uh, no writers or directors announced yet. Nothing is final. We'll see if the movie actually uh, manages to take off. But sounds interesting. Alexis, what do you think about all this? I think John Cena is the perfect candidate for Duke Nukem. Right? I didn't even, I know. Until I'm reading it now, I'm like, that makes absolute sense. That's, that's an awesome, awesome choice. That's great casting. If that really happens, it'll be really cool. I just don't know how much... They're going to have to put a lot of fluff in there to make a story out of the Duke Nukem world because it was always just like quick quick punchlines, right? Or quick taglines and then a lot of just killing and slaughter. If well, they managed to put that in, a, in, a, in an action movie, like a straight action movie, I think it'd be pretty cool. If it does not take itself seriously and it's yeah, just a lot right. of fun and action, then I'm in. Yeah, it can't take itself seriously <laughs> at all. Comedy, it's got to be a crazy fun, comedy, action. fun action Done. movie, right? Sort of like um, Deadpool. If it's like Deadpool or it's just oh, that'd hilarious be incredible. from beginning to start. That'd yep. be incredible. Uh, our final geek news sto story is about uh, RoboCop sequel, finally. In an interview, one of the original co-writers co of RoboCop mentioned that he was working on a script for a sequel to the original movie. This movie would be completely unrelated to the reboot, RoboCop 2 and RoboCop 3. The project would be a direct sequel to the 80s action movie. No other news is known about this project, and it's not officially announced yet. Thoughts on a return to classic RoboCop, Kevin? I am in. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> I'll just say that. I'll buy that for a dollar. That should tell you that I'm in. <laughs> uh, RoboCop was always a great flick. That's one I grew up on, one of my favorite um, movies from back in the day. So uh, that would be a really cool thing to see, especially if they're going to just continue on. Because the reboots were they were pretty cool, but they weren't what I wanted. I would love to see like just a continuation of the story and see where he is now. What I would really love to see is a reboot of the side-scrolling arcade game. Did you ever play the arcade game Robocop? Oh, yeah. Side-scroller, yeah, awesome 16-bit graphics. I remember that game. It was awesome. That'd I remember be a cool putting, reboot. putting money into that and dying. That's all I could do. I bet if they make this movie, <laughs> that will not be too far off because they're doing that for a lot of stuff. That would make perfect sense, and I would love to see something like that. Um, all right, on to our next segment. This release is brought to you by Blue Microphones. Shout out to Blue Microphones for these incredible mics we're using on the show. Kicking off the recent releases is 
Iconoclast, available on the PC and other platforms. It's a really cool exploration platformer, action adventure game inspired by Metroid Fusion uh, and Metal Slug. You, but you use a wrench to solve problems and defeat your enemies. I'll talk about this later in the show. Um, oh, is that? Oh, I see. I see what you mean. Also releasing this week is Monster Hunter World on PS4 and Xbox One. The PC version is coming out later this year. Team up with friends and hunt down different types of monsters in this new entry in the Monster Hunter franchise. Notably, this marks a return to consoles for the Monster Hunter franchise, which has been previously on portable platforms. Pretty exciting. Are you going to be playing that Dude, one? Dude, it looks fun. I don't know. I'm tempted. I'm very tempted to tempted play co-op well. with Isabella. What about Might you? Have, yeah, I'm on the same boat. Did you try the beta? I never tried the beta. The beta was cool, but it's kind of what's holding me back from buying the actual game. If I didn't play the beta, I would have done it. And it's not, really? it's just kind of not, it, it, it's an incredible game. The graphics were beautiful. It just, I was playing it on the PS4 and it didn't seem fully optimized graphics wise. Like I was hitching a lot. And the gameplay, like I understand what it's supposed to be, but I don't know if it's something that'll be long lasting for me personally. Yeah, I don't know if it'll hook me for, for long. But I definitely want to try it out. I mean, come on, just look at it. It looks awesome. It does look amazing. And finally, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is now available on PC and other platforms. It's a new fighting game set in the Dragon Ball Z universe featuring characters such as Goku uh, and more. There's also a story mode featuring a new Dragon Ball Z character created just for the game, Android 21. Ooh. Ooh. Of course, you can play online or locally. This one seems pretty cool. This one is on PC, right? Yes, sir. I believe so, yeah. Available on PC. I, I love fighting games and I love playing through them until I'm, I get to the end of whatever, what they call a story. The story mode, <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're single player. Because then when I have to play online, I just get uh, my butt whooped and then it becomes no fun for me anymore. <laughs> it suddenly goes from being awesome to, oh, yep. this is really, really frustrating. You gotta play the new uh, Street Fighter. There's also the new Street Fighter that has story mode fleshed out. Oh, that's Arcade awesome. Arcade mode. That's pretty neat. All right, up next, blatant plug of the week. Our blatant plug of the week starts off with this monthly promo. Uh, this also includes for our new desktop, so purchase any desktop or select that laptop and you get a free 250 gigabyte Samsung 960 Evo PCIe NVMe M.2. How many more <laughs> letters can we throw in there? A bunch of digital copies for games, so check that out. Also, if you purchase an Eon 15S, you get a free $50 Amazon gift card, free US ground shipping, and uh, some digital game codes as well, including a free digital Steam key for Shroud of the Avatar, which has officially launched, I believe. So big shout out to Portalarium Studios, our friends Richard Garriott and Star Long for launching that long-awaited title. I can't wait to give it a whirl. PewDiePie's giveaway is still running. It is. Uh, we are on the last the last week or so, last week and a half. So the giveaway ends on February 8th. We will be announcing the winner on February 9th on the live show. We'll also be announcing on social media. Make sure you sign up at originpc.com slash PewDiePie for your chance to win this awesome, awesome chrono system. Small form factor system with a 1080 Ti in it. It's an absolute animal of a PC. Um, so go sign up right now. Do not miss your chance. Also, Blizzard and Hearthstone are doing a giveaway with our Eon 15S. This one is US only. Sorry to disappoint, friends, uh, but those US participants can, and you can win a bunch of cool prizes from Blizzard and Hearthstone. Uh, you could find all this information on our social media, on Hearthstone social media, uh, Facebook, Blizzard, all that good stuff. Check it out. Lots of giveaways. Lots of cool giveaways. Um, what do we got next? Ah, yes. It's eat, time for game? some eat, eat, sleep, game, repeat. Oh, well, I like <laughs> Nobody wore their trick shirt today. My bad. Eat, sleep, game, repeat, where you can buy, where, brought to you by the Origin PC Gear Shop, <laughs> where you can buy the eat, sleep, game, repeat t-shirt. Yeah. Alexis, what are you eat, sleep, game, repeating this week? I am revisiting the forest. Uh, there was a massive patch somewhat recently, and I've been playing it. For those that don't know what the forest is, it's a survival game which i'm sure you've played many many before uh you're stuck on a, you get stranded on an island and there's tribes of cannibals trying to chase you down i'm playing co-op with a friend of mine and it's been an absolute absolute blast i really what really stands out to me from this game apart from other survival games is the crafting and harvesting there's such little tiny nuances that make it so different for example you can create log carts 
um, that you can actually, you see your character carting across the landscape, and when you chop down trees, it brings down logs, and you put those logs in the log cart, you carry it back, just little neat things like that, and every log you put into the log cart or the log holder, which you're seeing right there on the screen, you actually see each individual log, so it's like a one-to-one -one, um, display, and it's so cool. The crafting is very, very customizable. We've created an epic base. Uh, the other thing that really stands out is this, there's an awesome story mode, or story element to this, um, where as you go exploring, you start figuring stuff out about the island, you start figuring out there's more secrets and more things involved to this crash than you might have previously thought. You're not just thrown in here and have at you. You start discovering new things, you start discovering extra items. Um, it's It gets really, really scary at moments, especially when you discover a super dark cave and you're getting chased down by these massive mutants and what the all heck? sorts of weird, crazy creatures. It's super <laughs> dark, like Whoa. these cannibals, the way they've destroyed or killed some of the people that were on the island previously and you see their bodies lying around it's crazy it's a really really cool game oh though gosh. highly recommend it it's still an alpha i just found out recently it's only in development by a three-man team and they do outsource some, some people for art and stuff but at most there's only ever been 10 people working at the game at a time Dude. and it's been an alpha for like three years um, but they just came out with a big patch which added a bunch of new things which i've been enjoying i love it if you guys want to play with us on our server uh, you know where to find us on discord.gg slash originpc. Just shoot me a message, say I'm interested in trying the forest, and you can jump on our server and see see what it's all about. Love to play with you guys. That game looks intense. Very intense. I hope We're, nobody joins your server and then, you know. Ruined their stuff. Oh. Ruined your stuff. <laughs> you know what, I'll start a new server Internet. for the Origin PC crew. Yes. What about you, Kev? What are you playing? I'm playing a, a little bit different type game. Old school Metroid Metal Slug. Uh, style game called Iconoclasts. Ah, yeah. Action adventure game. It's made by uh, Joe Kim Konjak Sandberg. Um, he's the developer of the game. I'm loving it. As you can see there, the graphics are awesome. The music is really cool. Uh, exploring, finding new stuff. Uh, super fun. There's female characters, which is, you know, awesome. Uh, I already can't wait to go home and play today. Oh, I am. Um, now that I'm watching this trailer, I'm seeing some things I have not unlocked yet. Oh no! Spoilers! Isn't that the worst? <laughs> uh, no, the game is super fun though. I'm loving it. I uh, highly suggest you check it out on Steam. I think it's pretty cheap. Uh, also playing a couple other games. This other game called Shoe, also on Steam. I heard that's uh, pretty it's neat. pretty fun. That's a lot of jumping. Let's just yeah. say that. <laughs> and this other game called Celeste, which is also a lot of jumping and stuff, um, which is fun. I like the graphics. I like the music. It's very frustrating though. Yeah. Very frustrating. It's, fu uh, it's funny that you mentioned that about seeing that in the trailer and it ruining it for you. Same thing happened to me with the Force today. I was on this. <laughs> I was on the Steam page and I wanted to show a friend, "Hey, check out this game that I'm playing." And as I'm scrolling through the the screenshots, they showed me a screenshot of something. And I'm like, oh, I didn't want to see that. I haven't discovered that yet. <laughs> I don't know. I hate that. Oh man, that's the worst. Spoilers. All right, up next is check this out. Thank you to Elgato for providing the stream deck and capture card in our streaming PC. Much love. Uh, and check this out, we talk about anything we've been checking out. This includes movies, TV, music, tech, gadgets, app software, etc. Kevin, what have you been checking out? Well, I wanted to talk about what I saw at CES. So the last day of CES, we had all of our meetings Monday through Thursday. The last day, Friday, I was able to actually go check out the floor. So I took a peek at the, the show floor, and I saw some weird stuff, uh, as you can imagine. I bet. <laughs> so in no particular order, we'll talk about Intel's quote-unquote flying car, what? which is basically a giant drone that two people can sit inside of. They and, call it the Volocopter? And they call it the Volocopter. That's the feature where you will take this to work or to run errands or whatnot. Wow. Uh, flying car, a.k.a. giant drone, a.k.a. it's a helicopter. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, what else? I saw uh, Sight Chase. Is that what it's called? Hashtag PSY Chase. Chase. Chase C. Chase. Chase C. <laughs> Chase. So basically, this was a, a booth right on the floor, and it was really slick. You know, they had these basically like human um, skins, and the whole concept was that you would, you would wear this skin, and then when the skin would get retired, you would just move to another skin. So you wow. just kind of be immortal. They had a guy there uh, bringing people in to phase one. Hey, come on, come on, everybody come to phase one. I'll explain to you. He explains phase one. He did a great job. There was a video behind him and everything. And then he says, all right, on to phase two. And I said, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with this. I moved on to something else, but John, who was with me, he ch stayed and checked out phase two, where they had actual one of those skins like on the ground, like used, wow. and they had like a phase three. And then at the end of it, it was actually a giant elaborate promotion of um, 
a uh, Netflix show. So oh, this is all the Netflix come show. On. Yeah, I was like, bah, bah. <laughs> it was really well done though. It was really cool. That's awesome. It was cool. I mean, for that to be Someone like on said the show chat, it's called Psychosec. Psychosec. There you go. Thank you. Um, it was really cool how they had it right there on the floor amongst a bunch of other things that were real products. So that's pretty neat. A lot that's, of people thought smart. it was real. I thought it was real for 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 a second, half a second. <clears throat> Uh, what else? Smart. This is the this is a picture of Jensen on stage at the NVIDIA press conference. I went to the NVIDIA press conference. I think it was on Saturday or Sunday. I think it was on Sunday. And, of course, I had a bunch of cool stuff. They had the big format gaming displays. That was cool. They talked about Max-Q laptops, which we have already, which is still cool. And then they talked a lot about self-driving cars. This picture is showing their self-driving Ubers that they mentioned, but mm -hmm. they're, you know, NVIDIA is doing a lot of pioneering work in self-driving cars. They even set up virtual worlds to test their self-driving cars. So instead of having to, you know, there, there are people that are doing real life tests on real roads. But what NVIDIA did is they created these roads and these worlds that they could do billions and billions and billions of test miles. So I thought that was really cool. That's awesome. What else? This was a giant robot that you could crawl inside of and I think you could race other robots. What? So that was really weird and very scary. So CES was robots <clears throat> this year, that's what it was. Oh yeah, there was always lots of robots at CES. They also had a uh, giant Polaroid camera. Which <laughs> well, is, that's you know, different. <laughs> yeah, that's not that crazy compared to other things, but I thought it was cool. And, of course, they're promoting the new Polaroid where you can snap a pic and print it right there. It's like the inkless printers that just never run out of ink. Oh, wow. Super cool. What else? This was a uh, robot that could, guess what, play ping pong. You could play ping pong <laughs> against this robot. Which sounded cool, but then as you can see, it actually wasn't that cool because, well, he messed up there, right. but he quickly makes quick work of the robot. The robot was not that good at ping pong. <laughs> really, it was underwhelming. At first, it looks cool, but then you see a bunch of people beating the robot. And That's it's a like lot of metal for nothing. Boring. Yeah. What else? I saw Asus had a triple monitor bezel-free kit. Oh, yeah, I heard about um, that. That was really cool. This right here is called The Wall. This was at the Samsung booth, I think. And you can't really tell how big it is. It's kind of hard to tell. You can't really see that that well. You know, there's a guy standing there, but <laughs> it was ginormous because it was it was that guy's kind of close to my camera, uh -huh. and the wall is farther back. So that wall is ginormous. So is it just like a screen that? It's a that giant big? screen, a giant TV basically. It's a uh -huh. giant TV, but they were called it the wall because you know that sounds cooler. Yeah, of course. So they showed various content there. These were some really weird robots that More were robots. They were singing. Like they were synced up and singing. I don't. I don't know what that was, for children and elderly care. Interesting. It was really weird. interesting. Yeah, I think they escaped from the small world and Disney World. <laughs> this nice was a generation. robot that'll go to your local grocery store and pick up your groceries and bring it back to you. Wow, this is a, this is the future. That I don't know how that works it. because it doesn't look like it can pick things off the shelf. This is but the the beginnings <laughs> the beginnings of Skynet. It's it's happening right before us and it's all yeah. unveiled at CES. This was a giant elaborate booth all about a giant appliance that, that's in the back there, that black and white thing. That's a giant appliance that will, guess what, fold your laundry for you. Oh, wow. That's right. A giant appliance that will fold your laundry. I hate to say it, but I'm super lazy and I need one of those myself. Yeah. If I have a robot that's going to fold my laundry, get my groceries, and drive me around, <laughs> really... I'm not going to be doing much. <laughs> this was just nice. Like, I guess you think you have all this free yeah. time to do extra uh, This was just one day of me taking a peek. There's a million things I didn't see, but those That's are so, so a few of the crazy things that I saw. It's, CS is nuts. CS is crazy. So now my underwhelming, check this out after that amazing <laughs> presentation. Even though I absolutely love these, I'm using uh, these JBL Reflect Mini Bluetooth headsets, and I like them so much. Super clear, crisp sound. I've never had a pair of wireless headsets before. This is my first pair. I'm really happy I went with JBL. JBL makes those awesome Bluetooth speakers that they're kind of big and bulky, yep. but have an incredible sound. They make these. They don't have a, a very deep sound, like you don't get that bassy, bassy tone, but they're great, great clear sound, and the battery power is really what makes it stand out. I've had these with moderate use for over a week without charging. And I haven't taken it to the end. I don't even know if it was running low on battery or not, but I charged it because I, I just figured, hey, maybe, maybe it's time to charge it. Uh, the microphone on it's really good. People that I've talked to on it say they hear me perfectly. I, I hate talking on these things, and I've always hated it just because when you're 
when you're on them and you're just walking around, it just kind of looks like you're talking to yourself. Like no one even knows. You're one of those what guys. Yeah, exactly. But it's really, really cool. I absolutely love it. Check these out if you're looking for a pair of Bluetooth speakers. JBL is really sweet. You're one of those people that you see like uh, shopping or at the gym. You're like, this, who's this person talking to themselves? <laughs> and they say, oh, they're super have, cool. They I have their wireless it. headsets. I know. I hate doing it. I'll turn it off sometimes and just pick up the phone regularly. Um, all right. So now it's time for a break. After the break, we're going to be talking with Crucian Gaming. We're going to be talking about streaming, gaming, his channel, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, so be right back after this break. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back soon. New guest, who this? New guest, who this? Oh man, I didn't expect us to come back live so quickly. All right, welcome back. <laughs> Shout out to Intel for powering our streaming rig. It's time to chat with Crucian. Crucian, also known as Crucian Gaming, is an active streamer who you can find on Twitch playing different games such as Breath of the Wild, They Are Billions, Star Citizen, and many more. Crucian has been streaming for two years or so and has been a part of the Origin PC family for a very long while. Crucian is also heavily active within the Star Citizen community and plays it a ton on his streams. You can also find Crucian on Twitter, sharing the Origin PC love and Star Citizen love. My man Crucian, how are you doing this Friday, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Good, man. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here. We've got a few questions for you. Yeah, man. Kevin, take, a, take it away. What's up? Thanks so much for coming on the show. We love Crucian. Crucian is a, one of the OG Origin PC family guys. One of the awesome guys. So I got a couple questions for you. Uh, you've been growing as a streamer over the past couple months and past couple years. You know you've been working on this. Uh, how has it been going over the past few months? Uh, it's been it's been going pretty well. Um, you know uh, when I first started off, I started off when November 2014. Um, I was in the Navy, so I was going on deployments a lot. And then um, tw early 2016, I really got like really serious into it. Start streaming like every single day. I stream like six days a week now seven days a week um, unless you know I, I i really can't stream because of work or something but um i got partnered within like uh nine months i believe and uh, actually you know taking it serious uh been playing a lot of star citizen that community is pretty pretty damn wonderful and um you know they helped me grow as well and then usually when i venture off into other games they're they're still there with me sometimes um so it's been going pretty well been going pretty pretty well that's awesome man it's been awesome watching you come up dude i mean yep 
we were there we were there at the beginning stages and now seeing you like in all the star citizen stuff and actually working with them directly it's been pretty cool just to watch this this growth with you it's been it's been pretty cool to watch it from the sidelines man so i'm very very happy for you uh, yeah, you've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild in Master Mode and they are Billions. How have you been liking those games? Um, Breath of the Wild, I actually played it. I did my first one through when it first came out on, mm -hmm. on the Switch. And since like the Switch didn't really have any games after that, I kind of uh, just gave my Switch away. And then I, I, I just traded in my PS4 Slim because I want to get a Pro and I just got a Switch again. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do Master Mode now. And nice. it is actually, the dungeons are not that harder, but like, like you can't get that many weapons the the monsters are harder they can actually the bosses can regen health so you got to make sure you, you're you know you're always hitting them um but um it, it's really fun it's actually like you know my stream enjoys it really entertaining um and it's just it's actually a good challenge to actually redo that and and uh play play through that game like again uh they're billions um that game makes me really salty because <laughs> Like you get to the like you you get to the end no matter what percent it is twenty percent thirty three percent a hundred percent you get to the end and at the end you think you're prepared and when they literally say there are billions and they come through all the sides you're not prepared and you know I there's it's it's a lot of lessons learned but it's a really fun game and I I really suggest people to pick that game up if they don't you know especially for it being twenty four ninety nine it's a really good game if you love RTSs so. Yeah, I heard I heard that game's awesome. I mean, they threw in some crazy elements. It's not just an RTS; it's also a zombie survival game. Like, that was a weird combo to make, and they did a really good yes. job with it. I like it. Like, they, I, I'm a big Warcraft three fan. I've loved RTSs since I was. That's my first PC game, Warcraft uh, three: uh, Reign of Chaos and Frozen Throne. So, there are billions. Is just like implements all that plus tower defense, and I love tower defenses. But like, if you don't prepare yourself in that game, it's you're yeah you're in for a for a big defeat, I'll tell you that right now. It's sort of like a uh, Sim City and zombies because you know you you play Sim City yes. and that, after a while you're like, all right, time to destroy my city. Yeah. So the zombies take care of that for you. Zombie mode. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly how it is. <laughs> so we talked a, a, a hot second there about Star Citizen. Can you tell us more about playing Star Citizen and how the game's been, how the community's been? Okay, so uh, Star Citizen, for those of you guys that don't know, is a space and sci-fi MMO. Um, it is currently in development. It's been in development for quite a while because uh, first off, before they even started even developing the game, they were, you know, building the engine. Um, they're using Lumber Lumberyard by Amazon. Um, awesome. Right now, in the development stages, the game is, um, they have like the base so far. So you have, um, you have like the space station, you have a few actual moons, and not even planets yet. These are moons, and they're actually so huge in the game that like it would take you to walk like a long time it's like a moon is basically the size of planet earth and then um there there's this planet called crusader but it's a gas giant it's actually the same um as uh, i believe jupiter um so like these moons are just huge man and um right now they have the base moon set up they're working on planets they're working on putting in more um um more ships into the game but um right now the, most importantly they're working on optimization working on the net code, trying to get, you know, people that have lower end systems for them to be able to play it. Because in all honesty, right now, if you have somewhat of a lower end system, like say like DDR3 RAM and like, an, uh, you know, a lower 900 series cards, right. it'll give you a little bit of a difficulty to play it. But right now they're working on, the, on you know, on optimizing the game a little bit more for those people to actually go in there and enjoy that alpha while, you know, while it still can. But in the game itself, you're able to do missions, you're able, you're able to do cargo runs, um, you're able to do uh, Star Marine, Star Marine, which is like a first person shooter. Um, there's there's stuff to do. Um, it, it It is somewhat of a learning curve to play, but usually, you know, I, I tell people, go into somebody's stream or go look up a video, that way you learn learn more about the game and that way you're able to understand, you know, how the game is being made and and why is, why is that game still, you know, in development because they're doing something that no other game is gonna be able to be done before. And it's amazing. That's for sure. That's one thing that, that's always blown me away about Star Citizen is just the scale of their of yes. the idea behind it, where you you have your spaceship, you start off in space or wherever you start off, you can fly down into a planet seamlessly, you can get off suddenly you're in first like a first person shooter game. You can either go yeah. do something social or you can go on a mission down there or do grab some trade runs or trade with other people and you could steal other people's ships and all sorts of craziness like that yeah like the game crazy. yeah because. The game itself, you're supposed to be able to do like realistic jobs. So mining, you're supposed to be uh, pirating, 
it's you know it's gonna be a realistic space sim and and like this is the first time i've ever grabbed like a a like a flight stick and a, and a throttle and actually right. play a game because it's so fun it enhances the game so much better yeah that's i think that's what i'm gonna do when i actually when it finally comes out i'll probably invest in one of those what do they call it? Hot, hotus, hotus? It's, yeah, it's a, it's a hotus. Yeah, hotus? it's a hotus. Yeah. Huh. What yeah. are you gonna be? Are you gonna be a smuggler? Yeah, I'll probably be a smuggler. To be honest, I'm that's gonna what play. I would be. Nailed it. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> that that that'd be the coolest experience for me. All right. So since you've been playing Star Citizen, uh, where can you say the game is at right now in terms of features and gameplay? I know you went over that a little bit, but do you yeah. have an idea? Maybe I mean, especially since you talked to them more uh, about what what the next phase is. How much how much closer we are to a full release? Okay, so in all honesty, man, for release, I don't know yet. But right now, since uh, the last year where they had their own, you know, they have their own convention, which is CitizenCon, they actually put out that they're going to start releasing patches quarterly, so every three months. So, like, on their website, they actually have a, a whole development plan um, and a whole plan saying what's going to be released, what's, you know, what ship is in the works, you know, what's coming out. So in March, basically, it's going to be of the optimization patch where they're, where they're working on the net code. And then in January, they're planning on adding basically all the jobs in the game. Uh, mining, they're going to be adding um, trading, they're going to be adding um, basically any job that you can think of in the game, like um, re like repairing ships. You can be a you know a repair technician. Um, you, if somebody's ship blows up, you can actually go salvage the parts. So you can be a salvage person if you want to be. You know, <laughs> so in March, optimization in June, um, they're going to be coming out with jobs, and then uh, later on in the year, they're going to be coming out, hopefully, with their first planet. And their first planet is, uh, I'm really excited for, for that. Like, just flying around these planets, man, is so pretty. And you can actually take screenshots and actually have them as your wallpaper. It's so fun. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. from what I've seen of the game just right now, the way it looks is amazing, man. I can't wait till the final version is out. I'm, tr I'm trying to do this, man. I've been trying to do this lately, especially. Is play try to play the game when it's absolutely done. Yeah, and we're talking yeah. about that because I I kill it Cruzy with early access. Goes games. in early and then he gets out. I, as soon as the game's out, I'm like, I've already spent a year on this game. I'm not gonna play it again. <laughs> like, I, so I, I did not even touch it. Right, exactly. <laughs> PUBG being yeah. one of them. I did that with Overwatch. I played Overwatch for yeah, like same. 10, 10 months to a year before it came out, and then I went into season one and I went all the way up in the rankings. Then I dropped back down and was like, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. I don't want to do it again. All right. Um, yeah. Switching gears, let's talk about streamy technology. So streamy technology has been advancing over the years as you've been involved with it, uh, deeply involved. What's your favorite new streaming hardware or software that you use yourself? Oh, man. I I want to say Elgato has been doing such a great job sure. with just everything they come out with. The, the green screen, even though I don't have one, but I'm <laughs> getting one here in the near future. Um, I have their stream deck. I cannot live without a stream deck. I'm telling yep. you right now, it makes everything a lot easier. Um, usually when I'm like switching scenes or uh, or typing something in chat, I, you know, when somebody subs, I can just spam one button yeah. and it just hypes the whole chat up. So it's it's really nice. Um, I I did order a cam link because I want to I have an A6000 Sony webcam. I want to use that as for my streaming. So um, just everything that Elgato has came out with, uh, you know, in the past year or so, it's been has been something that you must have for streaming. Yeah. And then they just give up that 4K capture card. So yep. sooner or later, I'm going to have to grab one of those as well. So They've been killing it, man. And, and just from going to shows and, and us knowing them as a company, you, they're so involved in the streaming community that they just know exactly what people and want. What they, like, they take yeah. feedback from everyone there. Uh, they talk to streamers, a, a bunch of them. And all these new products that they keep pumping out is exactly what people have been asking for. So it's awesome. I'm very happy for yeah. them too. Yeah, Razer as well. I've been doing pretty well. Uh, I ordered a Razer Keo uh, just in case, you know, when I if I do start like I'm getting out of the Navy here in a couple of months. So next year I'm going to try to go as much conventions as I can. So traveling with a, my laptop and then grabbing the Razer Keo, which has the lighting on it. So yeah. now I can start streaming when I, on the go. That's, the, that's really the, the camera with the ring light automatically on it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Pretty cool. So, cool, man. Looking forward to seeing you at the events. Yeah, for real. Oh, me too. I'm, I'm excited. All right, can you tell us and the viewers a rundown of your current streaming setup? Um, so right now I have like three monitors, uh, my normal camera, which is a C922 uh, Logitech un until I actually get the cam link and then I'll put the other A6000 on. Um, I just have, a, you know, this mic right, this mic right here, really, really good mic. 
uh, because I don't I don't like having you know crappy sound. Yeah, for and sure. you know my my viewers like me always being energetic and hyped, so I got to make sure they hear me pretty well. <laughs> But um, I have that. I have a mixer. I have my Nintendo Switch, obviously, because of uh, Zelda. And then just my stream deck and, you know, and, and a PC. I actually stream, unlike other streamers, I actually stream from the same PC. I don't have a dual stream PC set up at all. You do the, yeah. the single single stream PC? Yes, I do. Yes. Are you thinking about doing the dual setup or you're, you like the way it is right now? I actually like the way it is right now. Um, I want to do the dual setup uh, sooner or later when uh, I go back home and, uh, you know, build my whole office because I... There's a feature on OBS where you can do uh, use the net the network to actually uh, use it to stream. So I want to I want to try it out and see how that works out. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely pluses to using the two PC. Um, sting, single PC setups are awesome, but really when you want to get to that next level of quality, yeah. especially when you start not the next generation of games are coming out, like it's it's always good, especially if you're doing it on a professional level. Like you're you're getting to that point right now. So I know we've talked about it a bunch, so you're trying to get that second PC set up. So hopefully we can help you out with that in the future. Um, up to you. So let's talk about some real life stuff. How do you balance streaming, work, and real life in general? It's hard, hard work. Oh, well, for those of you guys in chat that don't know, I am in the US military, so- Thank I you like, for your service. They, yes, they, they make me work like eight to 12 hours a day sometimes. Sometimes yep. it's more relaxed, but um, one thing I, been away from my family for about a year and a half so you know it's all about work when i come home i basically eat and i go straight to streaming every single day um so it it's tough mentally because like you have to keep on schedule if you're not on schedule or if or if you like miss your sleep you, you like you have that feeling where you don't want to stream at all because you're so tired but i still do it anyways um but it's, it's just a matter of discipline yourself man if you want to become a streamer you have to be on schedule you have to try your best you know to to you know keep consistent if not you're it's not going to work out you know for you so how do you how do you find yourself balancing everything like you have any tips or anything um, you've learned <clears throat> so things things that i've learned is just keep on schedule if you if you tell your stream you know you're gonna be there at 5 p.m you know be there at 5 p.m if you can't man don't don't feel bad about it because I do feel bad about it when I can't be there, but I let them know, hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm tired. I had a long day at work. And they understand usually because they, they know my situation. Um, it, it's all about like scheduling yourself and disciplining yourself and getting the right amount of sleep on top of that. And, you know, just try to stay on top of everything. Um, trying to balance both at the same time is, you know, it's it's really hard, but if once you're able to do it, there's, you know, nothing you can, can't really do, you know, honestly. So. Awesome. Sure. Um, do you have any tips for, let's say someone fresh to the game wants to start streaming today. Today is going to be their first day on Twitch or on Mixer or whatever it might be. What, what tips would you give them? Um, my tip is, number one, stay consistent. All right. When you're first starting out streaming, do it because you just want to have fun. All right. Don't do it because for all the wrong reasons, like you're trying to make money um, or you're trying to become famous. It's not going to work out that way. Okay um just you know have have that personality just be yourself number one um when you first start streaming don't don't let yourself down because a lot of people when they start streaming they let themselves down um because nobody's coming to watch them or or you know they're not getting anybody in there when i first started out i was talking to myself i was talking to myself for for at least like three months before i started getting people in my channel it was you know it was it was pretty it was pretty funny because my wife would make always fun of me all the time, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but, um, you know, just try to be consistent. All right. Don't, don't worry about if nobody's in your channel, just have fun, enjoy the game, you know, talk about the game, you know, act like people are there. Um, number two is that always look at, you know, I, I look at my directory and I see because, you know, I'm not the biggest streamer right now, but, you know, I try to like strategize what I'm going to stream next. So that way I can, you know, jump in there and, you know, and, and get those people that still are interested in the game. But, you know, the bigger streamers are already done with the game. So, right. you know, like after Subnautica, all the bigger streamers done with that. I'll jump in there later and then, you know, I'll have a nice following because, you know, all the bigger streamers are already done with it. So, you know, strategy, stay consistent and, you know, just do it for fun. If it turns into something bigger, hey, you know, you're you're blessed and just, you know, keep moving forward with it. But, you know, those, those are the three things I got for somebody starting out. So awesome. That's really good. A lot of really good advice right there. So you mentioned your community. Uh, community, of course, is a big factor on your channel. 
uh, your social media. How do you maintain and interact with your your specific communities? So my community, I am very interactive. All right, somebody like from the second I start my stream to the minute I end it, I always say, you know, like I'm I'm one of the most like I I keep you know telling people thank you every time somebody subs thank you every every time somebody does anything follows thank you you know i i try to stay you know on top of it on discord every, every time like offline i play league of legends with my community i i do different games with my community offline fortnite um you know try try i try to play games where i don't play on stream play offline with my community um social media i try to you know just tweet out for like funny things about my life um and try to you know keep keep keep, keep them and you know in the loop about my life but not really too much you know too personally but like i honestly like i'm at work all day and i don't really you know like there's nothing going on at work but hopefully you know when i start going to like conventions and stuff i can i'll be posting more you know stuff that I, hey i'm just met this guy just met this guy so it'll, it'll be it'll be it'll be more fun it's oh I, you know you you want to do it so that way they feel like they're there with you you know for sure yep they're taking the ride with you they truly are awesome. yeah um other than Star Citizen, are there any other games or movies or TV or anything that you're looking forward to coming out this year, next year? Uh, so movies, um, I believe Avengers coming out this year, so I'm, I'm excited for Avengers. That's so, cool. um, yeah. So Avengers, um, for games itself, uh, we got Dark Souls Remastered coming out for the Switch. Oh, so yeah. I'm definitely grabbing that out because I've never played Dark Souls 1 before. I've only played three, so that's one game that I want to grab. Bang your head up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what else? Uh, I'm hoping they say something about Metroid. Hopefully coming out for for the Switch at E3. Hopefully. Um, yes, I got Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I might be playing that today. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Oh, nice. Um, but I'm I might be dropping some uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, uh, playing story mode and just having a good time. So um, you know, that's one uh, one thing I'm looking forward to today. And then I think that's about it, man. I'm. Uh, I was looking into Anthem, but I heard they pushed it back to 2019. So hopefully, fingers Maybe crossed. 2020. Today, please. <laughs> yeah, <Pardon>? right. <laughs> 2020 is the new 2019. <laughs> yeah, no. So, but it, but it, but it's okay if if you know if they want to push it back to do things right, I'm all down for that, and I'm all happy. Kind of like Star Citizen, you know. They, uh, however long they need to take to finish the game, I'm cool with it because I have other games I can play in the meanwhile, waiting for the game that I really want to jump into and 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 you know blow up other ships got you so we ask this to every single guest what is it you enjoy most about pc gaming compared to other gaming platforms all right so this is easy i just upgraded to 100 165 165 hertz monitor oh wow i used to play in a in a 60 hertz monitor in a in a benq and i'm gonna tell you the the just the the whole experience about upgrading to that 165 hertz monitor from a 60 hertz is life-changing like ships. I can never like go on a console and play on a TV and get that same 165 hertz. I can, and I'm just so in love with the new monitor. And I, you, you'll you'll never get that in console gaming. I'm sorry, guys. So that's why I love <laughs> PC gaming so much. It's true. One day the console gamers will catch up, but then by then we'll have already moved on to something else. Yeah, we'll have <laughs> 2,000 hertz monitors. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I hope so, man. I haven't seen a 54. I mean a 4K. You know, a 60 inch. You know, like 165 hertz monitor yet. So whenever that happens, I'm in there. So. Yep, it'll be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, cool. Well, that's the end, man. Thank you so much for joining us. But right now, the floor is yours. Any, we'll tell people where they can find you on Twitter, on Twitch, all that good stuff. Uh, hey guys, again, my name is Trushin Gaming. I am a very uh, hyped, meaning hype, energetic variety caster here on Twitch. Um, or for the, you guys are Mixer or Facebook or you know every, all those places. Um, yeah, I, I do stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Trushing Gaming. You guys can find me there. Probably playing some Dragon Ball Fighter Z tonight. And um, on Twitter, if you guys want to follow me, you know, if you guys have any questions about anything that I've talked about today or Star Citizen, you guys can find me uh, on Twitter at Trushing Gaming. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being a part of this. Uh, for those of you watching, we are going to host into Crucian after the show, so stick around if you want to watch him. Thank you again, Crucian, man. We love you, dude. Thank you, bro. Thank you guys so much for the you know opportunity and support all these years. Thank you guys. Of course, man. You're the man. Thank you. Sorry, all right. Guys. Up next, we have Ask Origin PC. Hopefully, you guys have been asking questions in chat. Now is the time for us to answer them. If you got any more questions, feel free to start asking them now. And here we go. All right. First question. Beep boop. I am questioning. 
<laughs> Thank you, producer, for that one. Uh, Doggish Pie seventy two thirty seven asks, "What do you think of Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom? Is that the new Jurassic Jurassic movie?" I'm guessing that's the that new the Jurassic World movie. I guess. Oh, I haven't seen the trailer yet. You haven't seen the trailer? What? No, not yet. Oh, I have seen the trailer. <laughs> I didn't like the last Jurassic World, so I'm the wrong person to ask. It looks like the last one, but now they're like all on an island, and the island is like going to destroy them all, so now they're all trying to escape the island. Meh. Not my thing. But I if you're into Jurassic, Jurassic World... I love Jurassic Park. If you, That's it. If you like... Ju okay. Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, the, the first original one. one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll see. I'll let you know when I watch it. That's for sure. Are your PCs better than my MacBook for playing VR? Uh, interestingly enough, they are. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, nothing against Apple. Apple makes amazing products, but I think it's meant for different things. Apple and gaming, Macs and gaming have never really been a synonymous thing. I know they've been trying to enter that space, but when it comes to the pure power of PCs, um, the, the, pure power. the pure power of PCs, there's nothing that beats it, especially when playing VR. I mean, it takes advantage of... Uh, the GPU power to bring you the highest resolutions and the most FPS you can get, the most realistic setting that you can find is definitely on PC. So absolutely, and our new, all the way. our brand new desktops that we announced at CES, the new Millennium, the new Genesis. That's right. They have a VR panel. That's so right. what that is is a HDMI port right there on the front of your PC. Make it easy to plug into your, your VR headset. Has a VR has a HDMI port and two USB 3.1 ports. Correct. So you can plug everything right there. Um, and I guess I wanted to do this. Uh, actually, we'll do it at the end of the show. But I'll talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am <laughs> I am planning to stream my gaming sessions. What origin specs do you recommend I start with? That's a great question. In fact, uh, this is something I tell everyone. We can recommend specs to you, and I'd happily recommend specs to you. But we have an extremely knowledgeable sales staff. You can call them and you can tell them, or you can email them if you want, if you're not a phone person. Or you can go on our live chat, which we have on our website. You can let them know, hey guys, this is my budget. This is the money I'm working with. Uh, these are the games I play. This is what I want to play. Or if, you, if you're a professional side, uh, this is what I do with my PC. This is the type of work I do. Uh, they will happily, very knowledgeably as well, spec out a system for you and try to stick to your budget as best that they can. Um, but they're this, always yeah. looking what's best for you. So that's what I would always recommend. And they're more than happy to help you out to help you decide which Origin PC is best to suit your needs. Yeah, our guys and girls are here to help, and there's no pressure to buy. They'll, At they'll, all. They'll talk to you for as long as you want, and there's zero pressure. Yeah. Uh, but to help answer your question as well, I would go with at least an Intel i7 for and sure. at least an NVIDIA 1070 graphics card. So uh, at least give you some preliminary specs yeah, there. Yeah, 16 gigabytes is a must. Yeah. I think nowadays it's like the norm. You could go 8 gigabytes, but if you want to do a little bit more than just game on your PC, I would go with a safe bet and go with 16 gigs. Um, especially now with the adva advancement in games and everything coming out, 16 gigs, becoming, 16 gigs is becoming the new norm. Yep, yep. Uh, Griefy asks, at Origin PC, what's your more anticipated video games, albums, and movies? Oh, switching the question on us. I like that. So my most anticipated video game this year, Red Dead Redemption, of course. <laughs> Of course, Trusted of course. <laughs> Stole your answer. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, that new Netflix show that's coming out next month. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like some sci-fi show. I'm very looking forward to that. Hmm. Interesting. I Music-wise, I, I honestly don't even know what's coming out. Uh, here's the thing about me and music. I'm, I'm a huge music lover, um, like diehard music lover. But I don't know anything beyond 2010. <laughs> I'm like one of those guys that listens to everything from when I grew up or even from before. Like I, I love 70s and 60s music and then I love the 80s stuff and 90s, 90s rock and 90s grunge is like my stuff. So new albums, not anticipating anything. I have a library full of old albums that I, I still love to this day. Uh, movies, probably the Avengers movie for sure. And video games, Red Dead Redemption all the way, 100%. Uh, what is better, hard water cooling tubes or soft? It's really an aesthetics thing at that point. They're both really, really good. Uh, but whatever you think looks better in your eyes. Uh, definitely the hard, the hard tubing looks phenomenal and really, really clean and super nice. Uh, some people actually prefer the flex tubing look, so it's really dependent on you. Cooling-wise, though, you can get the same amount of cooling on both systems. Um, it also depends on who's building it for you, the type of loops that they're using, what custom loops they go with. There's a lot of variations that go into liquid cooling, but when it comes to just hard tubing or, or soft tubing, it's really dependent on the user. 
Or the the frostbite maintenance free cooling. Yes. Or there's the right. cryogenic um, <clears throat> cooling, which looks better. So right. yeah, it all, all comes down to what you're looking for. If you're looking for maintenance free, our frostbite cooler is the best. If you're looking for a little bit more flash and colors and things like that, then our cryogenic is better. Absolutely. Uh, Jacked Insanity, I don't currently have a PC yet. Do you recommend your brand as a starter? Absolutely, we have a lot of starter uh, items. For a starter desktop, you could look at our Neuron or Kronos line. For a starter laptop, the Eon 15S, absolutely great systems, affordable price, nice entry level package. Um, you can talk to our sales team too and let them know. Hey, this is, you can even talk to our sales, our sales team's all gamers. You can let them know like, hey, I'm just getting into PC gaming. What games do you recommend? Guarantee they'll recommend a ton of games for you because they all play PC games. They all have a library of games that they love um, and they know what works best with our systems for sure. Uh, Shalom, 777 piece asks, when are the new desktops available? They're available now. You can order yours today at originpc.com. And that is our Millennium V3 and our Genesis V3. Yeah, not only and the L class. Yes, and the L class professional. So not only do we announce these at CES, but we launched them, so they're available right now. Uh, Danger Dave asks if you could compare the Xbox One X to any Origin PC spec-wise, which would it be? I think even our lowest end system, right? I don't. Yeah, there's people that have done this comparison already online, where mm -hmm. you, you can actually compare an Xbox X to a PC. What would the specs be? Uh, I it's do really, know. Really low end. Like, yeah, it's low uh, end, like yeah. below a 1070, I think, graphics card. Yeah, which um, the way the way our brand is, we just offer the latest and the greatest. So it's really hard for us. Even our lowest end system, I don't think would would compare uh, good enough with the Xbox One X. The Xbox One X being a great console, don't get me wrong, I have one myself and I love it. Um, but just PC wise, the performance is, is there's a huge difference. And even as Crucian mentioned, even the TVs, they don't have the refresh rate that monitors have. Right, exactly. So there's so many different factors there. Uh, or DBC, what do you prefer, desktop or laptop? Really, if you would have asked me five years ago, desktop all the way. With the technology going into laptops nowadays where you can get 10 series cards that are nearly as powerful as your desktop cards and you can put desktop CPUs in your laptops, now I can like I'll just take my desktop with me and travel with it. It's basically what what's ha what's happening with laptops. Um, so it's a tough for question. me, yeah, I don't prefer either one. I can go with either or. Yeah, I love my desktop and I love my laptop. I mean, there. If I had to choose only one for the rest of my life, of course I would go with laptop because it has the the benefits of being portable. portable plus, right. it's still super powerful. But I would never want to give up my desktop. I love my desktop. Agree with you there. Uh, that's it for Ask Origin PC. Thank you guys for participating in this week's segment. Much appreciated. Now it's the post of the week. Last week's post of the week topic was, what would you like to see turn into a theme park and what would the rides or shows be? We received lots of theme park ideas, but we could only pick one. That one would be the two-time champ Michael Tucker, second win. What, second man, win? Michael Tucker. Nice. A DLC theme park. Want to go on a ride? Drop in a token. Want to eat a hot dog? Drop in a token. Want to look at a duck? Drop in a token. Drop in a token, go for a walk. Want to inhale? You'll need a token for that. Exhale, token. Leave the park after all the fun you had. You guessed it. Pay a token. Thanks, Michael. Also, Sorry. Michael had a special message for the people of Origin PC community. He says, I don't compete often, but when I do, I always win. Stay thirsty, my friends. Wow. <laughs> Michael, quite, quite the two-time champ. The two-time champ. Uh, congrats, Michael, for being the first ever two-time champ for the Origin PC Post of the Week topic. Dude, that I, theme park sounds like a nightmare, though. I know. Is that hilarious. EA's theme park? EA's theme park, exactly. Uh, Kevin, what's next week's topic? Next week's topic for Post of the Week there is... is what kind of useful robot would you actually use and why? Examples include a bodyguard robot that follows you around to protect you, obviously. A cooking robot that can obviously make you meals. Or a foosball robot that you can get better at foosball. Or the one I mentioned at CS that'll fold your laundry. <laughs> uh, make sure you to use the hashtag OriginPCLive with your response. I will be picking the winner next episode. And Michael, I don't know if you're going to win again, but Good a lot of people you. are going to compete. Good luck. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to wrap up the show now, but I wanted to make the announcement here on Origin PC Live. We have some live builds coming up next week. It's been a while since we've oh, done yes. them. February 1st will be our first live build. Mark it on your calendars. We'll be promoting this all over social media next week. 
February 1st, we're doing a streaming PC for our man Lyric. And not only that, we're going to be doing it on twitch.tv slash Lyric. So we're going to be doing it on his channel for his live build. We're going to be building him a new Millennium V3 in our new case. So everything that we have in our V3, you guys will get to see up close and personal. Join us on Lyric's channel February 1st at 12 p.m. EST. Uh, February 2nd is Origin <laughs> PC Live. That's Friday with special guest Naomi Kyle, XIGN. Uh, awesome streamer, awesome influencer, great gal. We absolutely love her. We can't wait to have her on the show. February 3rd. She's going to be in the building, too. She's going to be right she's here. She's going to be here with us. We're not going to do a Discord chat. February 3rd, she is also going to be on Origin PC Live's live build number two of February 18th. We're going to be building Naomi, an AMD-based Millennium V3, custom designed for Naomi Kyle. She's gonna she will be here herself building it with a member of AMD, uh, Leslie. Um, it's going to be an awesome experience. I'll be here hosting. That's going to be February 3rd at 1 p.m. EST. Join us here on twitch.tv slash originpc, mixer.com slash originpc, and facebook.com slash originpc. As for other live builds, we have three coming up, but those I will wait to announce. I can give you the dates now, February 13th, 14th, and 15th. Three live builds that week, back, back to, to, back, to, to back, back to back, followed by a very special Origin PC Live with a very awesome guest you all know and love, and I will announce it then. I don't want to spoil too much too soon. But again, February 1st, Lyric on Twitch.tv, Lyric, February 2nd, Naomi Kyle on Origin PC Live here with us. And February 3rd, Naomi Kyle's live build on twitch.tv slash originpc, mixer.com slash originpc, facebook.com slash originpc. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Origin PC across all social media. That's at originpc on everything. We love you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you, Crucian, for being the guest. We're going to host into Crucian right now, so stick around if you want to watch our man do his thing. See you guys later. Huge week next week. See you next Adios, week. Adios, friends.